Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how to use Dynamic Zoom inside of DaVinci Resolve 18, including a couple tricks I recently picked up for myself. So when you add Dynamic Zoom to your video clip, what you're really doing is telling it to either zoom in or zoom out, and it can also include panning involved in that from the start of your video clip to the end of it. So the duration is going to match whatever your cut clip on the timeline is as well. So if you want to make your dynamic zoom faster, what you would do is simply make a cut. So if I cut my timeline here at about 12 seconds, then this video clip is now 12 seconds. And if I add dynamic zoom to it, it's going to take 12 seconds for the zoom to occur. One of the reasons you would even use dynamic zoom instead of just keyframing the zoom over here is that it gives you visual indicators on the screen when you show them. So if you click on your clip that you want to add dynamic zoom to and click here on the drop down in the bottom left of your preview window, and this is on the edit page, by the way, uh, go down from transform to dynamic zoom. When you enable that, you'll see two boxes, one that's green and one that's red. So the green box is your starting place and the red box is your ending place. And DaVinci Resolve will automatically pan and zoom to go between those two points over the duration of your video clip. So if you click on the four corners of either box, you can reduce the size of the starting and ending frame, which is going to make more or less zoom in depending on how much difference there is between these two. So let's go to the start here. Uh, make sure dynamic zoom is enabled in the inspector over here if it's not already and I'll hit play. And what you'll see is that the video will start inside of this frame and then it will zoom out to this red frame on the outside. So zoomed in at the start when I hit play, it's uh, very zoomed in, but it's slowly zooming out to that final point. And I don't need to do any keyframing over on the right. So you could argue it's a little bit easier. Now, when you have your green box selected, if you're careful, you can click on the line and pull around the screen to where you want the starting position to be. So if I start in the top right corner and I end centered as it would be right here, then it's going to need to pan in addition to zoom to get to the final frame point. So we have it zooming out from the top right corner, but we're also panning back to the center so that we can show the frame in the center. So now if we go to the start and hit play, you can see how it was zoomed in in the top right corner initially. But as we go on, we're showing the bottom left hand corner as well. So pretty simple at a basic level, but you can also swap the positions of both the green and the red box. So if you decide you want to reverse it from a zoom out to a zoom in, all you would need to do is click on your clip, go to dynamic zoom and hit swap. And now you can see the green and red boxes have reversed their positions. If I go to the start, hit play. Now we're zooming in on uh, that red box position. Now this can also be handy when you want to zoom in on something and then you want to zoom right back out. So, so let me go here to about 20 seconds in and I'll make a cut here and then we'll enable dynamic zoom on this clip. So I'm going to click there. Let's swap the red and green boxes. So the red is the ending point. I actually want to zoom in and then I'll move the box, let's say to right here. So if we hit play on the timeline, we're zooming in. But now what we can do if we want to have that zoom right back out is we can just split this clip in two again. So I'm going to be blade mode, make a slice. Uh, right now, as it would stand, it's going to zoom in and then it's going to go back out and zoom in again. But as I mentioned, we can just reverse the animation using the swap button. So I'm going to click the second cut here, hit swap. And now this animation is going to be opposite of the first one, which means if we go to the first one out of these two, hit play, we get that zoom in. And then right after that, it's going to be zooming back out exactly in reverse. So if you ever wanted to zoom in on a point, and then reverse that you could do that pretty easily here. Another thing you could do is cut twice to have a middle point where there is no animation and then zoom back out again. So what we could do to have a bit of a delay and when it reverses the dynamic zoom is hit P to go to blade mode. Let's cut that middle portion there. Let's click on the middle clip, keep dynamic zoom enabled temporarily and let's just take this red box and make it the same position as the green box. So I'm just going to pop this in right about there. So if you get it roughly in the same position, that should work. And now let's play it again where we have the zoom in. And then at this point, it should just be static frame and we get a zoom out. Another option would be to just disable dynamic zoom on this clip and then find the exact zoom amount that it should be at for that point in time. Uh, yet another option would be to take advantage of ease modes here. So with ease modes, you can have it be really slow at the end or really slow at the start. First, I will make a cut. 
Let's enable dynamic zoom on this clip. And then let's have it zoom out a bunch. I'll hit B to go to blade mode. I'll split the clips in two. Let's take the second clip and reverse that. So we have it where it zooms in and then zooms out again, but we want it to be really slow at this middle section here. So if we click on this left side clip and then we take the dynamic zoom and put it as ease out, hit play, then you'll notice it's really, really slow at the end of the first clip. And then if we do the same thing in reverse for the right side clip, click on it and change it to ease in, then now at this start of the clip, it's gonna be really slow. So if we go back here and hit play, you'll see it progresses pretty fast at the start and middle sections, gets really slow and then slow still as we get to the second cut, but faster when we get to the end of that clip. So that could be another option if you just need it to focus on something for a couple seconds and you're okay with just a tiny bit of movement, you can use ease in and ease out in order to accomplish that. So I've showed how to use dynamic zoom and a couple of the tricks about it, but why might you want to use dynamic zoom in your videos? And I think the simple answer would be to create some extra movement. So if you have a very static image and nothing's really going on there, obviously this clip is pretty cool, so it doesn't really apply here. But if you had a static image and you wanted to create some movement, all you would need to do is make a cut, click on it, and you can just enable dynamic zoom. And now it's going to have some zooming motion. And if you don't like it going that direction, just swap it and go in reverse. So a zoom out or a zoom in, very easy to get one of those two results. So it's just a really easy way of adding some extra movement to your video clips. Of course, whatever you can do with dynamic zoom, it's possible as well with keyframing zoom and position up here. That might take a little bit longer to do. So dynamic zoom is just a pretty quick and easy way of adding some movement to your video, but just one of many options that you have. And of course, there are other tools you can combine it with like transitions inside of Resolve 18. But that's pretty much all I've got to say about dynamic zoom. So I hope all of you learned something from this video. I've been Chris. Thanks for watching to the end, and I will see all of you in my future video content.